The National People's Congress has voiced opposition to the Dalai Lama's speech in the European Parliament, his latest attempt to split Tibet from China. The MPC also expressed disappointment with the European Parliament for providing a platform for the Dalai Lama's separatist activities. The MPC released a statement stressing that Tibet is an inalienable part of China's territory. It says issues related to Tibet are completely the internal affairs of China. China firmly opposes any countries or organizations, including the European Parliament, that interfere in China's internal affairs through involvement with the Dalai Lama. The MPC said the Dalai Lama's speech proves once again that he is not a pure religious figure but a political refugee engaged in secessionist activities under the camouflage of religion. The statement said the Chinese people will unswervingly safeguard the nation's sovereignty and territorial integrity and that many at any attempts to interfere in China's internal affairs are firmly opposed by the Chinese people. China has urged the European Parliament to recognize the secessionist nature of the Dalai Lama and his followers, stop supporting Tibetan separatists in any way, and stop interfering in China's internal affairs. Separately, the 11th Panchan Lama, one of China's most respectable Tibetan living Buddhas, has told followers of Buddhism to contribute to the unity of the country and ethnic harmony. The remark was made to followers during an inspection tour of central China's Hunan province. During his stay in Hunan, the Panchan Lama also toured a memorial for late chairman Mao Zedong and presided over prayers at two temples. The living Buddha said believers should blend holy Buddhist doctrine with socialist construction, working for harmony in society. He said Buddhists should make contributions to national unity, social stability and the reunification of China. To some other news, Beijing's ban on smoking in public places was imposed more than six months ago, but concerns remain over whether the ban can be implemented effectively in the capital of a country that's home to a quarter of the world's smokers. This is a restaurant in Beijing's Haidian district. No smoking signs are posted here. Restaurants in the capital must separate smoking from non-smoking areas, but many cigarettes are still being lit. Normally, we would explain the regulation to customers who smoke and persuade them to smoke in the smoking zone. If the customers insist, we don't really have any good measures to stop them. The main inspector enforcing the smoking regulations, Beijing Patriotic Health Campaign Committee, says they have sent warning notes to more than 600 units who have violated the ban, but not a single penalty note has been issued. The main purpose of this regulation is to raise the public's awareness of the impact of smoking on their health. So they would learn good habits. The penalty is not the priority. Some legal experts disagree with the system. There must be a mandatory requirement to ensure the implementation of a regulation. We cannot impose the law on the basis of morality. No matter how high one's moral level is, the bottom line is the law. If one breaks the line, he should get punished. China is a party to the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, which will implement it from January 2011. This means China must take some effective measures to fulfill its commitment to smoking bans within three years. Beijing has begun to amend the regulation and explore a more effective method of enforcement. Wu Peng, CCTV. Welcome back. Afghan President Hamid Karzai and his Pakistani counterpart Asif Ali Zadari have met in Istanbul. Their talks on Friday aimed at reducing tensions over militant attacks along the two countries' border. The two leaders met along with the Turkish Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who sponsored the meeting. Afghanistan has long accused Pakistan of failing to take action against Taliban militants based in the tribal region along the border. However, analysts say there have been signs of cooperation between Afghan, Pakistani and foreign troops, especially in dealing with cross-border infiltration of militant fighters. 
Indian Prime Minister Mamohan Singh and Russian President Dmitry Medvedev have signed a civilian nuclear deal in New Delhi. The deal was one of ten agreements signed between the two countries on Friday. Russia agreed to help India build four nuclear reactors. Singh said the agreement marks a new milestone in the history of Indo-Russian cooperation. Medvedev said India also agreed to buy 80 military helicopters and discussed leasing a nuclear-powered submarine from Russia. This is uh, Russian President's first official visit to India. Staying in India, a top law enforcement official admitted on Friday that there were government lapses and last week's terrorist attacks in Mumbai could have been prevented. There has been a public uproar over security and intelligence agencies that failed to thwart the deadly siege. India's Home Minister made the acknowledgement as new de details surfaced that a Pakistani militant group had used an Indian operative as far back as in 2007 to scout targets for the attacks. There have been some lapses. These are being looked into and I will do my utmost I will strain every nerve to overcome the causes of these lapses and try to improve the effectiveness of the security system of the country and in the process we will help the state governments also improve the security system. The World Health Organization says a cholera outbreak in Zimbabwe could be even worse than the figures show. The UN says the epidemic has killed more than 500 people across the country, with over 12,000 suspected cases so far. As Yang Weihan tells us, the country is asking for more help to pay for food and drugs. WHO figures show that 4% of people with cholera are dying in Zimbabwe. But many sufferers are staying at home rather than going to hospital. A lot of treatment centers for cholera are not functioning. In addition, there's not the money for uh, cholera treatment supplies. With the effect that many people decide uh, not to even try to go to cholera treatment centers to get treated. So these cases are not counted. High levels of cholera are common in the region, but it's hit in Zimbabwe especially hard because the population has already been weakened by hunger and poverty. Officials blame the latest outbreak on lack of water treatment and broken sewage pipes. On Wednesday, the Red Cross delivered more supplies to fight cholera in the country, promising to release more funds. It said more water treatment plants and medical staff are needed and the costs could climb into tens of millions of U.S. dollars. The European Commission, meanwhile, said it will provide more than 12 million euros for medicine and clean water. Britain has offered 4.4 million U.S. dollars and set aside a further 10 million to provide medicine and basic health services, while the U.S. said it will provide an additional 600,000 U.S. dollars. Yang Weihan, CCTV. In Georgia, the government has dismissed its defense minister, David Ketsarashvili, foreign minister, Eka Tekeshlashvili, as well as ministers of education and culture. Prime Minister Grigor Ngalopshvili announced the dismissal on Friday. He said in order to implement reforms and fulfill promises the government made to its people, such as deepening the process of democratization and strengthening the country's institutions, significant steps have been taken in several directions. The Prime Minister said uh, Katerashvili will be replaced by one of his deputies, Batu Kultelia. He also appointed Grigor Vashate as uh, Foreign Minister and Nika Ravamia as Minister of Education. Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper has suspended Parliament to avoid a likely defeat in a confidence vote. The unprecedented move allows Harper to retain power and confront Canada's flagging economy. A Conservative leader won approval by the representative of the head of state, Canadian Governor General Michael Jean, for the power to suspend Parliament until January the 26th. Harper hopes to buy enough time to develop an economic sti stimulus package. Speaking from outside the official residence of the Governor General, Harper urged members of the government to work together to focus on strengthening the economy.